This is on at this uh, lesson is on acid and acids and bases, so uh, let's get underway. Um, what we've got right here is an acid, so vinegar, and this is an example of a base. Bases are often cleaners, so bleach. Uh, right in the middle, thud. <laughs> right in the middle, water. Water is a neutral substance. It actually has parts of an acid, the hydrogen ion and parts of a base, the hydroxide. Hydrogen is H, hydroxide is OH. Oh, H, OH, that's what water is. Two hydrogens, right? H, O, H, H, O, H. Anyway, that's what water is. It's a bit of acid, bit of base. Locked together though, so nice and neutral. The, the hydrogen and, uh, and the hydroxide ion aren't gonna come out in just uh, pure water. But uh, in an acid, you got lots of hydrogen ions, and in a base, you got lots of hydroxide. Okay, you're going to need your periodic table. Uh, you're going to need some note paper, and uh, yeah, I'm going to pull up my notes. Let's do some notes together. Again, periodic table here. Uh, this uh, this lesson: What's an acid? What's a base? How do we measure and test for acids and bases? We're going to compare the properties of acids, bases, ionic compounds, and molecular, because you already know about ionic and molecular. And then we're going to name some acids. In the textbook, we're in uh, chapter 2, page 60 to 69. Let me share my screen, though, right now so I can get underway. Clickety-click. Here we go. So again, yeah, make sure you got your periodic table. Uh, make sure you've got chapter 2. Uh, there's page 63 is where we're at. You're definitely going to want to be reading through that. Okay, let's work together. Let's take some notes together. We're going to talk about what is an acid, what is a base. Uh, I mean, like I was just saying, it is all about the water, just kind of a basic, basic understanding. I just got to get my marker going here. Here we go. Basic understanding about water. We all know that water is H. To O liquid. What might be new for you is thinking about water this way as sort of hydrogen bonded to an OH, but you'll see that's the same thing. That's still two H's and an O. Okay. And uh, this is truly what water is, though, as well. It's actually made up of hydrogen ions, which are positively charged, and they want to be attracted to and are attracted to hydroxide ions. Oh, fancy new name here. Negative charge. These two do stick together. Of course, we'll just put aqueous. So that means they're in solution. Water in water in water. <laughs> uh, you're going to notice hydroxide is oh, just going to turn that off. <laughs> you're going to notice hydroxide is down here right there. Hey, negative charge. Hydrogen positive charge, those two can go together. That's showing us, yeah, we can make water. But yeah, let's take some notes here about each of these, about an acid. Uh, ultimately, you can see some examples, lemon juice, and I held up uh, the, uh, the acetic acid or the vinegar. Acids are sour. They have a high concentration, and you're going to want to get this down in some notes here. High concentration. Um, this hydrogen ions as I write that as you write that say hydrogen ion write it down to hydrogen ions so high concentration versus basis now I'm not suggesting you taste any of these but baking soda you can uh, also soap which I have an example here got some soap soap is also a base uh, we've all tasted soap probably not willingly uh, it's very bitter very very bitter bases are bitter uh, salads there's a lot of uh, uh, salad leaves lettuce lettuce leaves are very bitter because they're very basic uh, this has a high concentration and this is indeed what a base is a high concentration of OH or Hydroxide. Oh, okay. So it's something to do. Oh, got to put the plus one there. Something to do with, uh, you know, the H and the OH. And indeed, water is perfectly neutral. It's right in between acids and bases. So if we were going to just kind of grab this little image of water here, 
Uh, it's neither an acid nor it's a base. It's perfectly neutral. We can actually neutralize acids with water. We can also neutralize bases with water. You can, in fact, combine an acid and a base and neutralize it. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you try that, actually. Just use water. <laughs> All right. So that's that's the basic of acids and bases. That, um, you know, acids are sour and bases are bitter. Acids got lots of hydrogen ions. Bases have lots of hydroxide ions. Let's write the word for that. Hydroxide ions. You're going to notice that's right here. So you're probably going to want to put a note on your periodic table. That's what makes a base is the hydroxide ion. Lots of answers on your periodic table, right? Uh, some quick examples of acids and bases. You're going to see a pattern here with the acids. HCl. Hydrochloric acid is what that's called. AQ. It actually would exist as a gas, but it easily dissolves in solution. Uh, here's acetic acid. Here's the vinegar. CH3COO and then another H right there. You're going to see on your periodic table I'm just going to scroll up quick, quick, quick. Acetate, CH3COOO. We can stick in hydrogen right on there, and that's what acetic acid is. Hydrochloric. We'll look at how to name these, but you're already getting a sense. Hydrochloric acid. This is acetic acid. You just need to know that that's acetic acid. That's definitely one you're going to want to put on your periodic table. Uh, if vinegar was highly, highly concentrated, in other words, highly concentrated acetic acid, it would burn through a table. It would burn through your, your, your apartment floor to the next apartment. Uh, so it's actually, it can be very powerful. It's quite weak what we use. Here's the hydrogen again for an acid, hydrofluoric acid. This stuff is nasty, nasty, powerful acid. Lots of the hydrogen ion easily comes off and causes lots of problems. Hydrofluoric acid. Okay, cool. Some examples of bases. Okay, so we looked at acids, bases. Your best example uh, would be good old sodium. NH, NA, <laughs> NaOH, sodium hydroxide. Oh, there's that hydroxide again. Again, aqueous. This is actually one of the most common things in bleach, sodium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is another powerful, powerful base. In fact, if you add sodium and potassium to, to water, just those pure metals, uh, you're going to get some sodium hydroxide, some potassium hydroxide. So it's a way to make a base. It's also why... Uh, vegetables, especially leafy vegetables, are very uh, basic and bitter is because they've got a higher concentration of either sodium, potassium. They've got some some uh, some of the some metal uh, metal ions in there that's causing it, uh, the uh, uh, sort of the hydroxide to be kicked out. And so you kind of you, you taste that base, basey, basey, bitter base. Uh, the other thing about acids and bases, they're great conductors. They're a lot like ionic compounds, except they're not solid, but they are great, great conductors because they form ions in solution, right? So that's another key property. You know, if you've got a an unknown uh, liquid, check its conductivity. See how conductive it is, right? And if it's conductive, well, it's either ionic or it's an acid, or it's a base. It's one of the one of those. And there's a way to test, uh, and that's in fact what we're going to talk about. How do we measure and test for acids and bases? Let's take a look at that right here. Litmus paper. That's how we do it. Let's write a few notes here. Um, yeah, again, you a test using what's called litmus paper. There's uh, blue, and it kind of looks purpley, but you know that's that's the blue. There's blue litmus paper, and there's red. So the blue we use to test a base, right? Because it's going to turn red, this blue, if we dip this into 
if we if we dip this blue litmus paper, sorry, and I, I think I I think I misspoke there. So the blue is is dipped into an acid, and it'll turn red if it's an acid. Uh, the red litmus paper, we would dip it into a base. And if it turns blue, then it's definitely a base. We'll talk about the pH scale right here. Um, but yeah, let's write a few notes here. So if you've got an acid, so you've got an unknown solution, and an acid is going to turn or turns blue litmus paper, so it turns blue litmus paper red, okay? So that blue litmus paper turns red. You dip it in there, and a base turns red litmus paper blue. Bases are blue. Another way to memorize this. And so yeah, you got your red. And basically, if we dip her in there, so we dip, put that red litmus paper into a base, there it's going to change, right? So you put it in, maybe you put a little eyedropper, drop a little bit of the base on there. If you got some blue litmus paper, and then we put a tiny bit of acid on it, boom, it's going to go red. Acids are red, bases are blue. You can see that in this scale here. It's called the pH scale. Notice how the acids are kind of red, very red on one end, and then the bases on this side, right in the middle. Guess who's in the middle between acids and bases? I've got it right here. Water, right? It's got both the hydrogen and the hydroxide perfectly balanced and stuck together. It, it, water, if it's pure water, it's not going to ionize. Remember, pure water, <laughs> you could have a bath and put a toaster. Don't do this at home. Don't do it anywhere. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it wouldn't conduct electricity. But do not test that. Just just don't. OK, so let's uh, let's talk about that's how to test, you know, have we got an acid? Have we got a base? Well, let's get some litmus paper. And again, if it's an acid, we put the blue in, it'll turn red. If it's a base, we'll put the red in, it'll turn blue. Bases go blue. But this is how we uh, how we measure it. It's using the uh, pH scale. And uh, I know you've got it here, but let's draw the pH scale. pH, by the way, stands for power of hydrogen. Hydrogen is powerful. Power of hydrogen. Okay, so on one end of the pH scale, you had a pH of one, that is a very strong acid. Okay, and then we'll make that scale all the way. Should be nice straight line. Please do straighter lines than I do. That is supposed to be a straight line. <laughs> 14, all the way up to 14. Well, this is a strong acid, or sorry, <laughs> come on, Phil. This is a strong base, strong base, okay? So a reminder of what a strong acid is, high hydrogen ion concentration, right? If it's an acid, you've got lots of hydrogen ions. We'll just put con for concentration. Whereas a base is the other part of water, right? Hydrogen, what's the other part of water? The OH. OH negative one. Hydroxide is what that's called. It, it has a high concentration of this. Hydroxide. Hey, that's right on, you know, in that, that area on your periodic table, the, the common polyatomic ions, hydroxide, high concentration. Hydrogen. Hydrogen ion, okay, cool. So again, your two big differences, your acids, lots of hydrogen ion, your base, which is blue, lots of hydroxide ions. Okay, right in the middle. Guess who's in the middle? Water. You got pure water. Now, it's pretty hard to actually find pure water, right? But pure distilled water would have a pH of 7. 
water. Neutral, neither acid nor base. Perfectly balanced. Check it out. Sea water, C is a bit basic. Uh, rain water is a bit acidic. Uh, this would be distilled water right there. Looks like blood is a, is a little tiny bit basic, but almost almost neutral. You know, in, in this area here, we, we would have neutral, right? But as we start, look at how the color starts to change, right? We get more and more acidic, and then this way we get more and more basic. Remind yourself again what's going on here with an acid. This is going to be the hydrogen ions. They're very sour. You literally, your, 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 your taste buds are able to do chemistry. They're able to detect that. And over here on the base, this is hydroxide ions. Negative AQ. These are bitter. OK, uh, let's look at the properties of each. We're going to look at the properties of acids and bases. Uh, maybe one last test here. So let's take our, our blue litmus, dip it in, <laughs> and then basically, yep, we know it's an acid because it's turned red. Okay, so this is definitely an acid right here, right? We can see, we take this blue paper, okay? But this one right here, we took some red paper, dip it in, the red turns blue, so this is definitely a base. So just a last reminder for us. How do we, you know, how, how do we know? How do we know? Because look at these. these. These just look like water. Yeah, you might not want to drink them. That yeah, might not be a good idea. So let's compare some of the properties uh, between acids and bases. And also we're going to look at ionic compounds, molecular. Uh, this is, of course, not a real picture of Venus, but this is what it would look like on Venus. Hey, fabulous place. Let's go for a holiday, right? Uh, that's going to be a whole ton of uh, sulfuric acid in the atmosphere there. So good old H2SO4. Uh, and would be a gas. And sulfuric acid is going to exist as a gas, but it's right away going to go aqueous. It's going to, you know, dissolve in solution. But it's definitely uh, acids, strong acids like uh, hydrochloric acid or gases, uh, hydrofluoric acid, so sulfuric acid. Uh, what else are we going to look at here? Uh, we're going to look at, uh, so that's a strong acid. This is a strong base, right? A cleaner. Your bases are cleaner. So uh, this is uh, sodium hydroxide or, or bleach. You commonly call it bleach. Here's an ionic compound, right? Beautiful crystals. Here's molecular methanol. Uh, I definitely suggest you write the formula for methanol. We're going to have it here in our little chart, but you're going to want to know uh, what what methanol is, have its formula right on your periodic table. Speaking of which, we can find some of the stuff right in our common polyatomic ions. What we've got right, uh, right here, we've got sulfite. OK, so SO4, SO4, oh, there it is, yeah. So at first, when we're naming this, and we're going to talk about how to name these shortly, uh, we would call sulfuric acid, when we're first trying to figure out the name, we'd call it hydrogen sulfate, and then basically we convert it to its proper name. But but yeah, you can see the hydrogen, you know, negative two, a couple positive hydrogens are going to nicely link up on this SO4, this sulfate. So, you know, this there's lots of answers on your periodic table always. So yeah, so let's compare these four right here, uh, acid. Again, let's get the, uh, the formula down for this acid, H2SO4. Uh, it is a gas. And in litmus paper, I mean, what's gonna happen if we take some blue? We we're just talking about this, right? If we dip it in, what's gonna happen? You know it, red, right? Is it conductive? Absolutely. These form ions. We're looking at it right there in the, 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 on your periodic table. You can find SO4 as one of your ions. You can also, we know hydrogen forms ions. Okay, base, sodium hydroxide. Your bleach is sodium hydroxide. Sodium OH, again, you're going to find hydroxide uh, right on, you know, it's going to be liquid. This is actually going to be aqueous, right? It's going to be in solution. Uh, you're going to take red litmus paper. Again, with a base, what happens to red? Turns blue. 
is a conductor absolutely 100 percent right what about ionic compound uh classic one sodium chloride nice salt that was a little picture of salt we had over there we know it's solid right um but nothing right it's neither an acid nor a base basically uh that's just going to kind of not do anything with litmus paper definitely conductive we know that molecular methanol i promised we get the formula and the name let's get the name here methanol you know wood alcohol is what it's it's more common name for this stuff and this is not alcohol you can drink it would kill you so ch3 it's used to power cars basically we can take corn and make uh make methanol it's a liquid so it's nasty stuff uh, nothing is going to happen. It's, it's got no, it's not an acid, it's not a base. It's not conductive. Remember, your molecular compounds are not conductive. They don't form ions in solution. Sodium and chlorine are going to form ions in solution. Okay, so yeah, we just looked at these, at these, uh, these four, you know, ha have, a, have a visual in your mind, right, of, of what acids, bases are now. Uh, your bases, your cleaners, very bitter. Do not try to taste this stuff, right, okay. And acids, well, think of lemon juice if we're talking taste. Uh, let's name our acids. Let's do that. Scroll down here, zoom back in. Get my marker working. Come on, computer. There you go. We got some common uh, sulfur, As acids with sulfur, acids with chlorine. Frankly, put all this on your periodic table. Um, you know the names of each of these you, you, you should know them and you can write them down <laughs> okay so number one we would name this as if it's like an ionic compound so name like ionic and we know the the rule for naming ionic compounds right you just write the name and then name i'd or we look and you're going to have to look in here for SO4, SO3, ClO3. Those, those you're going to find those somewhere. I know you can see them right now. If you look carefully, hey, where's Waldo, right? Where's Waldo? Where's this one? What about SO3? What about ClO2? You're going to find it. I know you will. Hey, it's fun. <laughs> okay, so it's a process. You do that first. Okay, then step two. So step two, drop hydrogen. So you don't say hydrogen. You'll notice when I said HCl before, I said hydrochloric. I didn't say hydrogen at all. So you're going to see that when we do these examples. So you drop the hydrogen. You don't say it. But what do we do? If it ends in I'd, and again, that name's going to come somewhere's down here. I know you're doing your where's Waldo. If that, if it names, if the name ends in I'd, we're going to change, and you're only going to want to write these notes down, right? We're writing them down together. You want to change to hydro, so we do say hydro, hydro blank, ick, so it's going to be sulfuric or chloric, right? Those are the two we're focusing on, acid. Okay, it could be eight. And you want to change that to ick, just ick acid. Oh, very icky. <laughs> so again, if it's one with sulfur, so it's going to be sulfuric. If it's one with chlorine, it's going to be chloric acid. Okay, and we're still going through, uh, we're going to do the, some examples. So these are just the rules right now, but I wanted to give you a kind of a preview. If it ends in it, Change to us, O-U-S, us, that's an O, trust me, acid. So sulfurous or chlorous acid. Okay, let's do each of these. Let's do uh, H2, I want a bit tiny more space, oh, okay. So let's see if I can fit it down here, H2, S gas, so that's going to be. Oh yeah, I need I need to move these down. Sorry, I'm going to scroll down now. You got those rules, you got them. Okay, so let's scroll down right here, right there. I got enough room. 
Okay, H2S as a gas. Hey, hydrogen. So name it like an ionic compound. So you just say its name, hydrogen sulfide. Hmm. OK, interesting. So what about this next one? We'll do three of them and then we'll convert them to the proper acid name. H2SO4, it's a liquid. Uh, H2SO3 liquid. Again, naming it like it's an ionic compound, I would just say hydrogen, and then I would say sulfate. And for this one, oh, how did I know it's sulfate? Okay, yeah, like the where's Waldo, right? SO4 right there, and that's why it's two H's, right? Negative two, two positive hydrogens link up, so right there. Okay, look for SO3. Do your where's Waldo for SO3. Hydrogen. You find SO3, pfft, sulfite. Ooh, oh, here's the here's the ide, eight, and ite. Oh, the the clampets. Yeah. The little the little family of ides, eight, and ites. So much fun. Okay, so this is just like rough work that you do. Now we're gonna actually give the proper acid name. Again, if it ended in ide, which this one does. This is going to be hydro, oh, hydrosulfuric, following that rule that we wrote up there, acid, okay? Next one, this ends in eight, so it's just sulfuric acid. This one ends in ite, so it's sulfurous acid. This is also why I suggest you just write these on your periodic table, actually. <laughs> So if you're OUS, it is still a good process to try to name acids. It's really good for your brain. This is puzzle class. Fun, 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 right? Okay, let's try some of these acids with chlorine. We got HCl. It's a gas. Uh, H, again, you can do the Where's Waldo and find ClO3. You're going to find that that would actually form a solid so it's a lot like an ionic compound it would easily dissolve in water though hclo2 solid again you're going to find these up in your table of common polyatomic ions anyway naming this like an ionic compound hydrogen chloride oh there's the iod right just like above i think we might know how to change your name uh, hydrogen. Okay, we got to find ClO3. I'm sure you have already. I'm just going to scroll up here. There it is, chlorate. Oh, there's ClO2, chlorite. Oh, they're right there. It's definitely a where's Waldo night. Uh, you know, I hope Waldo's okay too. He's always, he's always seems to be lost, right? So, um, yeah. And hydrogen, again, naming it like it's ionic, which of course, it's an acid, man. It's an acid, man. Chloride. Hey, again, we've got the ides, the eights, and the, uh, <laughs> the ites. <laughs> acid name, follow that rule. Hydro, hydrochloric. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know this. That's a famous acid. Okay, this one is just going to be chloric acid. Oh, yeah. And this one is going to be chlorus. O-U-S, acid. That's it. Okay, acids and bases. What we've learned, our goal in this, was to make sure you understood what an acid and base is. What's an acid? What's a base, right? Acids, hydrogen. And you, so you see that pattern here, like... A gazumba times, right? What's a base? Hydroxide, okay? We haven't talked about bases in a bit. Go back, watch the video. How to test and measure, right? Test, litmus paper. Put the blue litmus paper, put blue litmus in any one of these, right? If I had some blue litmus and put it in one of these, boom, it's going to go red, right? Okay. Uh, and of course, the, the, the pH scale. Well, these are all acids. These are going to have low pH. These are going to have a pH of one or two. This is gonna, these are going to be nasty, nasty, powerful, powerful acids. 
Comparing the properties, we looked at the properties between acids, bases, ionic and molecular. Got to know that. And we've just done how to name. What you're going to want to do is go to chapter two in your textbook. There's some practice questions and then there's an assignment that you're going to do after that. So right here, uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Read through all this stuff though too. I went through it, but you got to read through it. Make some of your own notes. Right there, practice questions, page 70. Do those once. Check the answers in Moodle. And then in your Moodle course, you're going to go, there's an assignment for acids and bases. And you're going to want to start working on that assignment in Moodle. Okay, that's all for this lesson. You take care. You have a good day. I'm just going to stop the recording. That'll take me a moment while I click the right buttons here on my super D super D computer. Here we go. Take care, everybody. Learn science. <laughs>